So this lesson is about triangle theorems. And ultimately, our goal is going to be able to use these theorems to find unknown angles and sides of triangles. So before we go any further, it's important that we understand that a theorem is a proposition, um, but it has been proved by reasoning. And this is the, we're going to use a lot of theorems in this part of math two. And we're going to have a lot of information about these different theorems thrown at you, but just so you have an understanding of what we mean when we say theorem. So the first one is going to be the triangle sum theorem. And I have a little video here from YouTube that's going to show you exactly what's happening. So I have angles A, B, and C. And if I put those three angles together, you'll notice that they create a straight line. So the interior angle theorem is that if I add all three angles together, I'm going to get 180 degrees. So here are two examples. For the first example, I'm going to add all three of those up and set them equal to 180. And then I'm going to start combining like terms. So 92 and 45 make 137. And then subtracting 137 from both sides, I get that angle X has to be 43 degrees. For example two, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to add 2X minus 2, 4X, and X plus 7. And I'm going to set them equal to 180 degrees. I'm going to combine like terms. I have x's and constants that I need to combine. So combining those together gives me 7x plus 5. Subtracting 5 from both sides gives me 7x equals 175. And then dividing by 7 leaves me with x equals 25. One more example here. Same thing as example number 2. I'm going to add these three statements together, those three expressions, so 3x plus 4x minus 9 plus x plus 5 equals 180 degrees. And I'm going to combine like terms. And then I'll add 4 to the other side to give me 8x equals 184. Dividing by 8 gives me that x is 23. So that was the triangle sum theorem. Next, we have the exterior angle theorem. And again, I have a little video to show you how this is going to work. So I have the same three interior angles, A, B, and C. So what's going to happen is this angle out here is the same as angle A and angle B added together. If A, B, and C make 180 degrees, or in this case now X, Y, and Z, these two have to be 180 degrees added together. These three have to be 180 degrees added together. So that tells me that these two angles here have to add together to make this angle outside. So these two opposite interior angles are going to add up to make that exterior angle. So here's some examples for you. So in example number one, X would be these two angles added together. So 65 and 42 gives me that X is 87 degrees. And again, in example two, I'm going to be solving for x. So I'm going to add 40 and 9x minus 2 and set that equal to 20x minus, or excuse me, 20x plus 5. I'm going to combine like terms on the left-hand side. And then I like to keep x positive. So I see that there's more x's on the right-hand side. So I would subtract 9x from both sides, giving me 11x. And then I'll subtract 5, giving me that 33 is 11x. 
or that x is 3. I have one more example. So again, I see that my exterior angle is labeled. My two opposite interior angles are also labeled. So I'm going to add those two interior angles together and set it equal to the exterior angle. I'm going to combine the constants together on the left. Again, there's more x's on the right-hand side of the equation, so I'm going to keep x positive, and I'm going to subtract 5 instead of subtracting 11, which will give me a negative coefficient. And then I'm going to subtract 2, and then divide by 6, giving me that x is 11. So we have one more theorem to go through. So before we do this, we need to understand what a mid-segment is in a triangle. And what that's going to do is it's going to connect the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So in this case, we see this one tick mark here and here, which means that AD is congruent to BD. So that tells me that D is the midpoint. And here, this double tick mark tells me that AE is congruent to EC, so that means E is my midpoint here. So that tells me segment DE is the mid-segment because it connects the middle of AB and AC. And there's something special about the mid-segment. You'll see here that the mid-segment is half of this large segment at the bottom. So if I wanted to figure out what BC was, it would be 2 of line DE. So here, I'm going to actually put this into use. So here again, I can see these tick marks. That means that D is my middle point or my midpoint over here. This double tick mark tells me E is the midpoint. So now I know line DE is the mid-segment, and line BC is 2 of DE. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an expression showing me that one of these is congruent to 2 of the DE segments. I would distribute. So I'll get 4x minus 12 equals 3x minus 3. Subtracting 3x from both sides and then adding 12 in the end. And now it wants me to find the lengths of DE and BC. Oops, which I did not do. So let's do that quick. So if I wanted to now find the lengths of DE and BC, I would start by, I'm going to increase the size really quick, I would start by substituting into DE, so I would have 2 times 9 minus 6, well 2 times 9 gives me 18 minus 6. So DE is 12. Now you could substitute 9 in for X on line segment BC. Or, since I know that 2 of segment DE is equal to 1 of segment BC, I could also do 2 times 12. I'm going to move this up a little bit, which would tell me that BC is 24 units. All right, so very similar to the last one, two of my DE segments is going to be equal to one of my BC segments. So 2 times the quantity x plus 2 is equal to 3x minus 8. 
distributing gives me 2x plus 4. And then I would subtract 2x and add 8, which tells me that x equals 12. Pretty sure I didn't actually type out. Nope, I didn't. All right. So let's go through and find DE and BC here as well. So I know that X is 12. So I would start with segment DE because if I'm substituting an X there, it's just 12 plus 2, which tells me that DE is 14 units. And then if I want to look at segment BC, well, I could do 3 times 2, or excuse me, 3, twi 3 times 12 minus 8, or I could do 2 times 14, which tells me that BC would be 48. 28. Sorry, I typed the right number and then said the wrong thing. All right, so let's look at this huge triangle. It's telling me that M, N, and O are midpoints of their respective lines. It also tells me that M, O is 8, O, N is 6, and M, N is 10. And my goal is to find the perimeter of the large triangle J, K, L. You can do this one of two ways. I'm going to use the mid-segment theorem, and I'm going to find the large sides and then add them together. We'll talk about the other, side, uh, other option in a minute. So I know that MN is going to look at KL since that is the large triangle here and I'm looking at this mid segment. So this parallel side down here, if I double 10 is going to give me a side length of 20. I'm also going to do the same thing. So I have MO and JK. Those lines are parallel. So MO is the mid segment. So two of this side here is going to give me that side of JK, which would be 16. And then last but not least, we've got the side length of six for ON, and that's parallel to JL. So doubling six tells me that side JL is 12. So in order to find the perimeter, I'm going to add those three large sides together. So the perimeter would be 48. So your other option is since I know that these are midpoints, I know that the exterior perimeter should be double what so our last example here, very similar to the last one, except I've been given the outside lengths. So again, since they want me to find the perimeter of triangle MNO, we are assuming in this case, since I apparently forgot to type it in, that M, N, and O are midpoints. So this is another one we could do two different ways. I know that exterior angle or the exterior perimeter is double the interior because of the mid segment theorem. But I can also use the mid segment theorem just like we did before, except I'm not doubling this outside length, I'm dividing it by two to get MN being 20. Going to do the same thing with 32. Dividing that in half gives me 16. And then for side 28, dividing that in half will give me 14. So adding 14, 20, and 16 
will give me a perimeter of 50. Now again, I could also add up the outside. So 32, 28, and 40 would give me 100. Dividing that by 2 would give me 50 units.